The Origins of Gravity. So, you might be thinking to yourself, well, gravity is always studied, physicists always think about it, and it's something that pretty much encapsulates all of us on the planet Earth. It also seems to dominate our whole universe, with things like keeping the planets in position, keeping the moons around the planet, keeping all the stars together, and also our sun orbiting the Milky Way galaxy. There are also a lot more other things that gravity does that affects our everyday lives and the universe around us. But because of gravity, we don't just simply float off into space when we jump into the air, or objects simply just don't fall from the sky, unless they really want to. But it's great just understanding gravity, but where exactly does gravity come from? How do we really know about the origins of gravity? How does it start, and how strong can it really get? And how does it really work? So we are seemingly bound to the Earth's surface, this is due to an invisible force that we call gravity. To physicists, gravity is one of the most mysterious and unsolved things in the universe, because we just don't have a true understanding of how it really works. Isaac Newton was pretty much a pioneer in understanding gravity. He created the laws of gravitation. He basically said that any two objects in the universe exert a force of attraction on each other, and this is due to the relationship on the mass of the two objects and the distance between them. The greater the mass of the two objects, and the shorter of the distance between them, they will exert a stronger gravitational force on each other. And this can be multiplied to have several objects, so it can get very complex very quickly. A great example of this is our solar system. Not only do you have the Sun, the Moon and the Earth exerting gravity on each other, but you also have all the other planets, the moons, the comets, the asteroids, and all the other garbage that makes up the solar system. And this means that all these objects have an attraction to every other object, assuming that they all have mass. And these gravitational effects can change due to the distance and the mass of the object. So then someone called Albert Einstein came along with his theory of relativity. He explained how gravity is more than just a force. It's kind of a curvature in the fabric of what we call space-time, where space and time are actually combined into one entity. This was an ingenious idea by Albert Einstein. The mass of an object can cause the space around it to bend and warp, depending on its mass. A great example of this is using a rubber sheet and sitting a heavy ball in the centre. This heavy ball will warp the rubber sheet. If we introduce smaller and lighter balls around the heavier one, we will see that they fall towards the heavier object, because of the heavier ball's mass. But in reality, we can't see the curvature of space directly. We can only see it indirectly by the motions of the objects. This means that any object that gets too close to another heavier object would be affected because the space that it is moving through is curved towards the heavier object. Another thing that astronomers look out for is a phenomenon called gravitational lensing. This is basically when gravity has an effect on light. A great example of this is a large galaxy or a cluster of galaxies. This can cause a straight beam of light to curve around these large objects, creating a lensed effect but looking at them even closer, you can see that the light actually curves. But the most strangest thing about gravity is it's the weakest of the four fundamental forces. Out of electromagnet, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force, the gravitational force is the weakest at the quantum level. There are also theories that state the gravity could also be a particle. Some scientists have proposed that particles called gravitons cause objects to be attracted to one another. This is just simply a theory though, but it would explain why gravity is so weak at such a smaller level. Also, it could be a great idea into understanding new phenomena within our universe that don't quite match our understanding of gravity. A great example of this is the centre of black holes. Another idea that is vastly more popular, and pretty much exists within our universe, are gravitational waves. These are generated when an object is accelerated by an external force. 
In the last couple of years, we've had some great observations of gravitational waves, and hopefully, within the future, we'll know a lot more about them, and hopefully learn a lot more about how gravity really works. So our overall conclusion to gravity is that it works, but only when it's convenient to our mathematics. When you look at certain places in the universe, gravity simply breaks down. And this is very obvious when you look at the very small bits of the universe and the very large bits of the universe. These are the levels of atoms and molecules where gravity just stops working and the very big side of the universe where we try to explain how galaxies keep themselves together and how the universe expands. There's something else out there that is stopping us from understanding gravity completely. Like I said before, black holes and the moment of the Big Bang do not work with our current understanding of our mathematics of how gravity works. The problem is with physics is it seems to be in two parts, the astrophysics side and the particle physics side, and we can't quite fit them together to create something that is an overall structure of what the universe really is. But scientists are really coming up with some great ideas, trying to put the fundamental forces into one to create one gigantic ultimate force of the universe. To be honest, that sounds rather familiar to a force that we all know and love. Our current understanding of the universe allows us to build upon of what we already know. Like I said before, we know what's wrong with the universe, but we don't know how to figure it out. But there are some great theories, some great experiments, and some great minds really trying to tackle the problem of the origin of gravity. Gravity on other planets. So gravity is a very fundamental force in physics, and it's one that we take for granted on the planet Earth. But it's something that we just generally don't think about. We think that gravity is pretty much constant everywhere in the universe. Having only lived on one planet, humans are pretty much used to the Earth's environment. Gravity is measured in Gs, so therefore it's quite easy to categorize Earth as just a steady 1G, or you can call it 9.8 meters per second squared. However, if you would go into space, or set foot on the moon, the gravity would be very different, and something that Earthlings would not be used to. So putting it in layman's terms, gravity is dependent on mass. From stars, planets, galaxies, and even subatomic particles, gravity seems to rely on just one thing. The mass, though, can be categorized in three different ways. Its size, mass, and density and this is what gives the object gravity. When it comes to the planets in our solar system, there is various size, density, and masses, and therefore, the strength of the gravity on the surfaces can vary dramatically. So let's start off with the Earth's gravity. As noted before, it was 9.8 meters per second squared. This means that if you held an object and let go of it, it would accelerate towards the surface at a speed of 9.8 meters every second from the freefall. This is a standard measurement to know the gravitational pull of a planet, and we express this in what's known as a single G. Isaac Newton's universal gravitational law states that two bodies can be expressed mathematically as a formula of a force, where F is the force, M1 and M2 are the masses of the objects interacting, and R is the distance between the centers of the object. There is also a gravitational constant. So now that we know how to mathematically figure it out, and use experimentation to prove this, let's see exactly how the gravity compares to the other planets in the solar system. So let's start off with Mercury. It has a mean radius of 2,440 kilometers and has a mass of 3.3 times 10 to the 23 kilograms. Mercury is only around about a third of the size of Earth. This makes Mercury the smallest and least massive planet in the solar system. However, it does have a high density, and this is just slightly lower than the Earth's density. Mercury has a surface gravity of 3.7 meters per second squared. So if you do the calculation, that's the equivalent of 0.38 g. So what's the gravity like on Venus? So Venus is a very similar planet to Earth, and it's often known as the Earth's twin. Venus has a radius of just over 6,000 kilometers, and has a mass of 4.87 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. 
And as you can see, it's pretty much the same size as Earth, but just a tiny bit smaller. It again has around about the same density, but because of the lower density, the gravity changes. This comes out at 8.87 meters per second squared. This means that the gravity on Venus is just lower than Earth's, at 0.91 g. So what's the gravity on the Moon? The Moon is of course the only astronomical body where human beings are being able to test out gravity in person. So the Moon is a very small object, at around 1700 kilometers in radius. Its mass is 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms, and of course, it's only about the size of the United States. Because of its size and mass, it also has a low density. This means that the gravity is only 1.62 meters per second squared. So the gravity is very low, at 0.17. This gives a great reason why the astronauts on the Apollo missions were jumping around like they were on a trampoline. It also gave them a great excuse to experiment on the gravity of the moon. So you can do certain things on the surface of the moon that you could never do on the surface of the Earth. So what about Mars? Its size, mass and density are very small compared to our home planet. It has a radius of over 3000 kilometers and has a mass of 6.42 times 10 to the 23 kilograms. But of course, it's a lot smaller than Earth. With this, it comes with a lower density, and therefore, its gravity is lower as well, at 3.72 meters per second squared. So if you calculate it, it comes out to 0.38 g, which again is actually closer to the gravity on the moon than it is to Earth. So what about the king of the planets, Jupiter? Well, Jupiter is just under 70,000 kilometers in radius, and has a mass of 1.9 times 10 to the 27 kilograms. And of course, because it's the giant of the solar system, it completely dwarfs the Earth and all of the inner planets. But because it's mainly made out of gas, it has a much lower density. And therefore, because of its considerable size, it doesn't have a higher G than you'd expect. It only comes out at 24.75 meters per second squared. This means that Jupiter's gravity is only 2.53. That's only two and a half times the strength of Earth even though Jupiter's mass is over 320 times that of the Earth. So what's the gravity like on Saturn? Well, like Jupiter, Saturn is a very similar planet. At just under 60,000 kilometers, this is the second biggest planet in the solar system and has a mass of 5.69 times 10 to the 26 kilograms. And of course, it dwarfs all of the inner planets put together. But again, it falls short like Jupiter because of its composition. This means that its gravity is only 10.44 meters per second squared. And surprisingly, it has near enough the same G as Earth does at 1.07. So now we come to the outer solar system. This is the realm of the icy giants. So let's start with Uranus, or Uranus, whichever one you fancy. Uranus is the third largest planet in the solar system at just over 25,000 kilometers. It has a mass of 8.68 times 10 to the 25 kilograms. And of course, it's just over four times the size of Earth. So again, this is still a very large planet. But like the other gas giant, Uranus falls short on density. So this means that it's only 8.69 meters per second squared. So therefore, it comes out at lower than 1g, at 0.87. And finally, we come to the furthest planet from the Sun. Neptune. Sorry about that, Pluto. Neptune is just under 25,000 kilometers, making it the fourth largest planet. It has a mass of 1.03 times 10 to the 26 kilograms. And again, it's a very similar size to Uranus. Neptune is a very similar planet to Uranus, not only in mass and size, but also in density. But it does have a higher gravity, at 11.15 meters per second squared. This means that it actually goes higher than Earth at 1.14 g. So it doesn't quite matter if you're on the surface of Mercury, the surface of Mars, or the clouds of Jupiter. Gravity basically determines the size, the mass, and density of all the planets and our sun. It also seems to figure out the formation of our solar system 
and the orbits of the planets. Understanding the effect of gravity, or zero-g, on the human body is essential for space travel, especially when you're going for long-duration missions, like to the International Space Station, the Moon, or possibly even Mars. Knowing how strong the gravity is on other planets could help us understand more about gravity itself, because understanding the gravity of a planet basically relies on three things – its mass, its size, and its density. We hope you have enjoyed this video and for more videos go to freakphysics.com.